Hey YouTube, now that we got that new Sea-Doo, I think I'm gonna do a lot more touring with it. And uh, one of the things that I think will happen is if I'm doing more touring, I wanna do more video and photography work. So I was trying to figure out a way to bring my stuff with me, bring my drone, bring my Osmo, that kind of thing. And as I saw in the first video, my Osmo doesn't fit the glove box. So we need to come up with a different solution. So I originally had looked at the inside storage bag that fits inside the front compartment but it's way bigger than I thought it was. In the picture, it looks like it might be 12 inches high, but it's like a laundry bag size type thing. It's monstrous. So I decided on this. This is the Link 20 liter modular box. It fits on the back of the machine. It's waterproof, locks up really tightly, swings right open, and it allows me to stack more things on top of it. And if you take a look inside, you can see that I've got all my gear in there. So I've got my GoPro bag. Got my Osmo, got my drone, and even my waterproof camera. Lots fitting in there, which is great. All my essentials are here. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to have them so that they're in foam-based sections. I don't want to necessarily have them in these bags, I think. Because I'm thinking, you know, with my drone, if I take it off the sea and I want to go somewhere, I'm probably going to want to take my drone in a case. But I don't think I'm going to leave this case on the sea It does lock up, locks to the sea if I buy the link locking mechanism but I think I would carry this with me if I came off the sea so I'd have all my gear with me. So I'd like to be able to open it, grab the drone and the remote out and fly my drone. The other nice thing about this is I think it makes a great launch pad for the drone as well. So what I wanna do now is I wanna make a template for this and see if I can't make out of pick and pluck foam a two level, two stage compartment where on the bottom level, I've got all my batteries and my less essential stuff like cables, that kind of stuff. And at the top, I have my main components of my technology that I can just grab, pull out and be ready to go. So this is kind of stage one. Stage two is I'd like to have some sort of mounting mechanism on the front of the sea for some of my controllers and stuff, but we'll see how that goes. But the idea behind this video is we're gonna convert this 20 liter empty storage bin into a 20 liter tech box for video and photography. So why don't you come along for the ride and see how it goes. So step number one of this process is gonna be make a template of the inside of this structure, both the base and the middle level, because I want two levels. But I think what I'm gonna do is I've got this piece of map left over. And I think, I think I'm gonna start by tracing the outside of it on here. So place that on here. Yeah, that's not bad. So we'll cut that out and see how that fits inside the link box. So I've got about eight inches inside the container. So it means I can do two four inch levels. I've looked at pick and pluck foam that you can buy and it's tough to find the four inch stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is there's a place in Kitchener called Kitchener Foam and I think I'm going to see how I do with my templates and stuff and then they can they can actually cut it all up and then they can cut using CNC technology. So the problem with the pick and pluck is I don't want the pick and pluck foam to be right at the edge of the container because then I don't think it's going to have a lot of structure especially for my top one that I want to be able to lift out. So I'm thinking I want the top one to be like a tray because then I can lift it out, get to batteries and cables, stuff like that. So that's what I'm envisioning anyways. I think I want to trace this. If this is good at the middle level, I'll we'll trace it so I have it ready to go for my second temple. getting caught on these little ridges here. Once I get this all fitting, then I'll basically place the equipment on it and I can trace out the equipment or the batteries or the cables and I'll be able to tell it will all fit. This one I don't envision coming out of the unit. This lower level will just stay in and I'll just pull my batteries and stuff out. 
So I've been working on it a little bit here and uh, getting a little picky. You can see I've added a bunch of pieces to it to get the shape a little better. So this fits in there nice and tight. I figure if I'm going to take it somewhere and get them professionally done, I should have a nice template. So I think I figured out all the stuff that I need on my lower level. First and foremost are the drone batteries. And I would like those to stand sort of upright like this. So three of them. The charger would be probably good to hang on to as well. For the GoPro, definitely the battery charger would be in there somewhere. Maybe stick that up here in the corner. My other thought for all the little cables and stuff, I mean, I could have, I guess, just spots for them. My other thought was to use one of these things. This is from my DeWalt tool kit. Comes with a bunch of these containers. And I thought if one of those was kind of mounted in there, all the cables, and I'm thinking the GoPro accessories. Can I get two of these in here? Three and a half seems to be my magic number. Let's set it up and trace it out. Yeah, I think that's good. That's good for the bottom. This is pretty sloppy for a second level, but I think I'm going to trace it anyways. And now let's fill it for the top. I know this will fit in, but it doesn't really look like it's going to fit. Maybe I'll measure and make it exact. That, that. I almost don't want this cut out of a second level. This can stay. Oof. It's pretty snug. Definitely not getting any extra equipment in there. So. I'm not really sure what happened here, but apparently I kept working and didn't keep filming. Go figure. But it's probably good because you probably don't need to see me go through the whole process of creating the upper template. But in the process, what I've done is I've created a new lower template, traced my old one, uh, reconfigured the layout here with my batteries and the charger because I just ended up using the space that was in the actual drone bag for the charger, which works out really well. So this is the new template. It's got all kinds of dimensions on it and stuff going to take that into foam store and Kitchener and see what they think. And I was able to work out the upper template. So it's about four inches up and it's got a layout on it as well. It's not fully darked out yet because I'm still playing with the idea of how I want to do my drone in the Osmo. Originally I was thinking, sorry, that was another think on the counter there, but I was thinking, let's not count that one, that I would use the shape of the drone and the shape of the Osmo for the cutouts. But I've gone just to a rectangle, hoping it might be simpler. Uh, I'm not totally sure about that yet. I'm not even totally sure about this whole customization thing yet, because now I'm looking at possibly getting a suction cup for the GoPro, and there's not room in any of this for that suction cup. So already my gear is kind of expanding beyond the 20 liter tote. So right now the, the tote holds all the bags the way they are. Maybe that's the best way to do this. Not totally sure. But I'd still like to go to the foam store and find out sort of what this is going to cost. I really like the idea of the bottom one. Things like this I don't think are going to change and it would become very advantageous. Kind of hold things in tight. This we might have to be a little more flexible with. Totally not sure. But that's the plan for tomorrow is to call them, head there, and hopefully that will be part two of this video. So I know you're still waiting to see the inside of the truck. Haven't got there yet because either the weather's no good or when the weather's good the truck isn't clean. And you can't do a walkthrough with a brand new truck if the truck isn't clean. So that's coming next. Stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed and hit the bell notification, do that. And then you'll be notified when part two of this comes out and see where this leads. Now the Sea-Doo season's over, we can concentrate on this and have it ready for season number two. So that's Greg Sinti. That's what the ride looks like right now. Thanks for coming along and we'll see you on our next one.